Hey there, you're about to discover one of the most expensive lies you've ever heard in your life, and it's a lie that we've all heard and one that we've probably all told, but we didn't know that it was a lie, and that lie is this. Time is money. We've all said it. We've all heard it. Time is money. Time is money. You've got to hurry up. Time is money. Time is money. Time is money. I submit to you that time is not money. Time is infinitely more valuable than money. If you believe that time is money, it's going to cause you to make a bunch of mistakes. First mistake, believing time is money is going to cost you, is going to cause you to waste a whole lot of time trying to save a little bit of money. And so we've all seen the people who drive, you know, 15 miles out of the way to save three cents on a gallon of gas, right? Um, or, or we will will spend. And I'm not saying I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm not I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's just not true, right? So what people will do is they'll spend three hours cutting out coupons to save some money on whatever they're saving money on it. And that there's nothing wrong with that, but. If they had used that same three hours, they, they very likely, to do something to create some value for somebody, they very likely could have made three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, or nine, or ten times more than the amount of money they saved on coupons. So what happens is, when we believe that time is money, then we begin to value, we begin to value money more than we value time. How can we tell if we value money more than we value time? Well, if you are like the average person in the U.S. of A., you probably sell a whole bunch of your time for a little bit of somebody else's money. And that is the greatest expense of the time is money lie. Here's what the scripture says. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm going to read it to you. It's in, it's in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 15. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, it says, wherefore see walk ye, walk ye circumspectly. Now, that circumspectly is not a word that I use in my everyday language, right? And so what happens is when we're reading the Bible, when we come across a word and we don't really know what it means, I think the best thing for us to do, instead of being in a hurry to get through that passage, we should stop and look up the word. And so that word circumspectly, it just means wisely. So it's saying, work, uh, see that you walk circumspectly not as, uh, and as wise. So walk wisely as a wise person and not as a fool. How? How do I walk wisely as somebody who's wise and not a fool? I do that by redeeming the time. Now, this is the fun part. What does the word redeem mean? The word redeem in this passage, if you go look it up in the Greek, here's what it means. It means to buy back or to buy up. So I'm supposed to buy back my time or buy up my time. That's the first definition. You know how dictionaries give you multiple definitions, right? So the next definition is to rescue it from loss. So I'm supposed to buy back my time, buy up my time, rescue my time from loss. And the third definition is improve opportunity. Hmm, that's interesting. I never, like, I've been going to church my whole life. I never heard anybody teach on buy back your time, rescue it from loss, and improve your opportunity. But that's exactly what that verse means when it says redeeming the time because the days are evil. It says, you don't, be a, don't be a fool. Be a wise person and then walk. Carry yourself as a wise person by buying back your time, rescuing it from loss, and improving your opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. That is not talking about like evil like we're in the last days and they're evil, but even though we're in the last days and they're evil. It's not talking about evil like the devil is evil. It's not talking about evil like wickedness and sin and unrighteousness is evil. It's talking about like evil, the word evil in that verse. Go look it up for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. It means difficult in nature. So in other words, it's hard. Life is hard. So the scripture is telling me to buy back, walk like a wise person, not like a fool. Buying back my time, rescuing it from loss, and improving my opportunity. That sounds very different than how most people live their lives. See, because we learn the lie that time is money, here's what we do. We value money more than we value time. We put too high of a value on money. And so what we do, and we don't put a high enough value on time because we don't understand the relationship between time and money, and we think time is money, so if time is money, then they're equal, right? But they're not equal. Because I submit to you that if somebody said to you, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $400 million today. How many of y'all want that deal, right? I'll take that deal. 
Except for there's one caveat, you have to end your life. Now who wants that deal? Nobody wants it. So you already know that your life is worth more than $400 million. But you don't treat it like it's worth more than $400 million because you waste a lot of time trying to save a little bit of money when you should be using that time to buy back that time, that, that, when you should be using your money to buy back your time. Instead, you're using time to buy back money. We're doing the exact opposite of what the scripture says and wondering why our life isn't working. So, like, I, I know for me, I understand the value of time, at least to some degree, because time is the stuff that life is made of, and when it's over, it's a wrap. This is not, like, we are not in a Mario Brothers console. We don't get another life. So we have to act like we're expiring. We have to act like we're evaporating. We have to act like we're eventually going to go away, and we have to, like, live life with a sense of urgency. And so... So when we understand that this is not the truth, time is money, that's not the truth, and this is, this is more, I'm going to do it in a different color just because it'll make it easier to separate. This is more true. Time is greater than money. When you, like, if, if you, if you, like, start to buy into this belief that time is greater than money, here's what's going to happen. You're going to start doing things to redeem your time. What's redeem mean again? Buy back, rescue from loss, improve your opportunity. So, see, we think we're being frugal, and we are with money, but we're being wasteful with time. Like, we're, 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 we're being frugal with money, and then we're being prodigal with time. We're being frugal with money, and then we're just throwing our time away. It doesn't make any sense. So, so, you buy back your time by leveraging your money. What does that mean? It means pick something in your life that takes a lot of time. Maybe it's cutting your grass. Maybe it's fixing your car. Maybe it's washing your car. Maybe it's cleaning your house. Maybe it's preparing your food. Pick one thing in your life that takes you a lot of time and then pay somebody else to do that thing Pay somebody to cut your grass, or to clean your pool, or to, cut, or to clean your house, or to cook your food. Pay somebody else to do that, and then take the time that you used to do, you, used to do that and use it to learn a new skill. That's how you buy back your time. Like, there are so many things that I didn't know. How, like, when I was broke, I didn't realize it was my lack of skills that was costing me a fortune. So, I, I remember when I was poor, I thought... Me being poor had something to do with me being a victim of circumstance. Had nothing to do with it. I was poor because I didn't have the skills to create wealth. How many of y'all track it? And by the way, just like you, and, and don't think, oh, but that's so hard. It's not harder than learning how to walk. You got that one down. Not harder than learning how to ride a bicycle. You got that one down. Not harder than learning how to use a computer or a phone or drive a car. You got that down. And so what happens is we, we, we buy into all these truisms that aren't true. They're basically sophisticated lies. And we wonder why our life isn't working in that area. Time is not money. Start placing more value. I mean, you start valuing time. Start valuing time more than you value money. And what you'll do, you'll spend, eventually you'll get to the place where you'll spend as much money as necessary to buy back the rest of your life. See, here's the real equation. Time is infinitely greater than money. That's the real equation. Time is infinitely greater than money. And when we begin to value time infinitely more than we value money, we will start having more money and more time. But if you keep valuing money more than you value time, what's going to happen is you're going to keep having less time and less money. How many of y'all tracking? And so don't buy the lie, it costs too much. I know, I get it, you're good at fixing your car. I'm good at fixing cars too, but I'm not going to do it. I get it, you, you think cutting the grass is therapeutic. I get that. You know why? You know what's really therapeutic, especially here in Florida? 
sitting in your house drinking a tall glass of ice water watching somebody else cut your grass. Now that's really therapeutic. See, when you begin to value your time, your time becomes more valuable. You, see, here's the problem. We want other people to value our time, and we don't even value it. Can I get a witness? <laughs> right? And, and so what we have to do is we have to start looking at this equation the right way, understand that because, because my life is expiring, I've got to act and live with a sense of urgency. It's, um, it's interesting to me, when I'm driving here in Florida especially, more than any other place I think maybe I've ever driven, how people drive like they think they're going to live to be 900. And they do it across all lanes because they think you're also going to live to be 900. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's maddening. People just dote about through life like it doesn't matter that they're going to die. So many people quantify the quality of their life by how many years of experience they have doing a thing. Well, I've got 40 years of experience driving this forklift. I got bad news for you, Bubba. You don't have 40 years of experience driving a forklift because it don't take that long to learn how to drive one. You got about two weeks of experience repeated over a 40-year time period. That's not the same thing. And I submit to you that the quality of your life should not be measured by the number of years of experience you have doing a thing, but the quality of your life is truly measured by the number of experiences you put in those years. And especially putting more experiences in those years with the people that you love the most and for the causes that you care about the most. But most of us can't because we are a slave to money because we value money more than we value time. There are a lot of business owners, there are a lot of business owners who, whose businesses can't thrive because they want to take advantage of the people who work for them because they value the money more than they value the time. And so they want good people, but they're unwilling to pay what good people are willing to work for. Well, and then, you, like, I personally, like, I really believe fast pay makes fast friends. Like, I hated it when I worked for people and I felt like after working all week like a three-legged mule in a hellstorm, that I had to go beg for my check. Hated that. So, let's start doing this. Let's start realizing that our lives, is gonna, our lives are going to count for far more when we live like this. instead of like this. It'll change your life for the rest of your life. Time is not money. Time is infinitely more value than mo valuable than money. And when you start treating it like that, you'll end up with more time and more money. I hope this helps you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. And all that other YouTube-y stuff y'all know how to do. All right, peace out, Cub Scouts.